lies and deceit. If not for the coming of IPOB of Radio Biafra, all of you would have lived and died in the ignorance that Ojuku caused a war. That's what they were writing. Britain helped them to write it. Ojuku was a rebel, a secessionist, because we had no media. That is why they're paying Facebook billions upon billions of US dollars to stop this truth from coming out. Did Ojuku cause any war? Go on is alive, go and ask him. Did Ojuku cause any war? Ojuku went and negotiated restructuring with you. In Aburi. You came back. Britain told you not to agree. Because Britain realized that all the component units of... Britain knows that if you go back to regionalism, you have economic growth. The country will do very well. But Britain doesn't want it. That was why they even instigated the Nzogu coup, so-called Nzogu coup, saying they would bring the world over to become the head of state. They knew what was going to happen. They wanted to truncate the economic miracle of Dr. Michael But what I'm telling you are fast. Go and investigate for yourself. In the East, you had the fastest growing economy in the whole world, over 40% every year. In the West, Abolo was performing his own miracle as well. Even in the North, Amadibola and Tafabola were doing very well. You had all those massive industries in the North. You even had Alamajiris that were employed in the North, meaningfully employed, gainfully employed. They were all doing very well. Britain said, no, for us to control these people, we need to impoverish them. Let us introduce this war. There was a coup by Nzogu. And after that, there was the massacre of, as usual, massacre of our people in the north. Ujuku said, I have to secure my land and my people. They said, no, let's go to Aburi to discuss it. Ujuku went to Aburi and agreed, restructuring. That's something now you're asking for, to tell you how foolish Nigerians are. They're very foolish. That same nonsense you're asking for now was discussed many years ago. Ujuku sat down in Aburi with Gowon and decided that Regionalism was the best way forward. Restructuring, going back to who you were, 1963 constitution, 1960, 1963 constitution. Be on your own and pay tax to the central government, as they have in America, as they have even in Britain. Britain, you have Scotland that is almost independent, Wales, the same thing, everybody is free, but Britain doesn't want the same thing they're enjoying to happen in Nigeria. Why? Ask yourself that question. Anybody telling you about one Nigeria is your enemy? I'll prove it to you now. Ujuku negotiated devolution, regionalism. The North will be on their own, the West on their own, even Middle Belt on their own, sorry, Midwest on their own, and then the East on their own. It's the same one Nigeria. On, on their way to the airport before they boarded the aircraft, a call came from Lagos, from the British High Commissioner in Lagos, to go on, telling go on not to agree. After having signed the agreement, that same go on you're looking at today god kept me alive so that he can witness the destruction he will bring upon that very zoo called nigeria go on said no do you know all the journalists in nigeria none of them have ever gone to has ever gone to go on to ask him why did he say no to aburi aburi was restructuring none of those agitating for restructuring right now has ever gone to go on or gone to nigeria to say but ujuku negotiated restructuring what happened they came back and they said no. Ujuku said, okay, so you want to continue to kill my people all over the place? No, because of that I'll declare Biafra. Today, they have brainwashed all of you with the perverse notion and thinking that somehow Ujuku is responsible for causing a war when opposite is the case. If not now, that after many years of hammering on this very topic, it has now sunk into the skull of the people. That go on was the aggressor, not to you. That's how Nigeria is. Always blaming the victim. And we lost over 5 million people during that very genocidal war. They killed over 5 million Biafrans. They wanted to wipe us away from the face of this very earth. But we survived it. And we are here today. Those they gave birth to, they have come. And this time with a wrath that you cannot even begin to imagine. And Biafra must come. It must come.
Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and good night to some of you, depending on where you are watching from. You are welcome to this program. While you are joining, share this video, invite others to join. We are live across the media platforms, such as Twitter, at Judge Money C. Uh, we are live at Judge Money Blog on Facebook. We are live at Judge Money Official. We are also live at Judge Money blog africa on to on youtube rather so this evening we are going to actually talk about the image you saw right in front of your screen 
while you join on the first on the other hand it is Owazurike and uh, his declaration and his motivation and his call to release Mazen Namdekan. Of course, whenever these people come out, you should know it is either they are pursuing something or something is pursuing them. But this time around, I can categorically assure you that um, <laughs> I believe Wazurike is not pursuing anything, but maybe something is pursuing him. And uh, I want you to understand that there is many things that Wazurike said, which are the things that are very, very important that we bring it back and remind you because it was we can send a message to all of you who believe you are affiliated to biafra or with biafra struggle and it was also actually said that some of you who believe that you are fighting for biafra so all these things we are going to unpack them and actually bring it down to the layman perspective or layman's understanding because it is very very important Owazurike is you know he, he he was one of us before he deterred or he derailed but at the end of the day i believe that what is pushing this struggle it is called a uh, something that we cannot see it is an energy that we cannot see probably the gene of those fallen heroes prior 1967 to 1970 probably it is their gene pushing the struggle and we continue we are they stopped and we will go of you know exceed we are the stop and we will restore biafra and they will all rest in freedom it is very very important for you to know that the spirit can push you to say anything the spirit can push you to do anything the spirit can motivate you that when you finish saying that thing by the time you know it is already out there you'll be wondering how did i say this am i really the one the person who said this that is how the spirit push you and at the end of the day if you think about it in a freedom fighting perspective you will understand that whatever you just said they are all valid. You, the free, you know, the, the energy was just there to motivate you to say it without fear or favor to anyone. That is how the spirit, as you may know, or the gene that is in us, that is pushing us to continue to fight for this struggle. And now we are going to be talking about uh, Wazurike's speech. We are also going to talk about the release of Ohamadike and the message Buhari, what, what Buhari said about Mazen Namdekano. And uh, secondly, of course, you know, then I will contextualize it rather with the, what this Uwanyamu said. From there, we are now going to also discuss the release of 594 Boko Haram, which Nigeria portrayed to you that this Boko Haram, they are repented, they have gone through a rehabilitation process. That is the reason why they will be reintegrated into the military formation or into Nigeria communities. I want you to know that in all these things that is happening, you should understand that that is the reason why a wise person said, the commander, Julius Malema said, and I quote him verbatim. 
He said that the reason why America, which time where there is a terrorism or any sign of terrorism, when the USA get involved, it will never go away. Rather, it will continue to get worse it be, until it becomes a generational curse. I'm not quoting Vabat in there, my submission, but, you know, that is exactly the way it is. So, in this regard, you will begin to ask yourself, terrorism in Nigeria keep on expanding. Terrorism in Nigeria keep on gaining momentum. Terrorism in Nigeria keep on becoming a norm to the societies or to the media, to everywhere, terrorism in Nigeria is not worthy of reporting anymore because it is not posing a risk to the politicians and the, maybe the, the people who groom them. That is the reason why terrorism in Nigeria is not you know, taking up your headlines every day because the terrorism in Nigeria is what if you as international community will begin to imagine even though all these ambassadors all these envoy all these representatives all these ngos that are in nigeria that are all over the place in nigeria they are able to know these numbers of people that are dying in the hands of this monstrous syndicate called terrorists but they will never actually bring it to the table. Even if they bring it to the table, they will weigh the option to see, is this really, you know, beneficial to, to, to the British, um, you know, agenda? Or they will weigh the option and ask themselves, is this really beneficial to USA agenda? And at the end of the day, they will come to the terms that if we curb this boogeyman of these people in this og it means that they will all start now focusing on how to have a good nation building rather instead of them trying to curb it they will fuel it when they fuel it you will be busy dying reducing your population because their own population is dwindling are you now understanding it? Facebook kicks you out. Bring yourself back up. Because these are the type of conversation Facebook does not want us to have. If they kick you out, make sure you bring yourself back up. Because that is their, their slogan. We will not, might not have a lot of audience. But if you share the video, we will try. So, it is very, very necessary for you to understand what is going on. That is part of, that is what we are going to talk about today. Now, let me read this news. Let me read this news to you before we go to Wazurike's speech. They said, according to Punch newspaper, but Punch newspaper is trying to be politically correct in this regard that is the reason why they said the number 590 repented boko haram terrorists and end course apologize for killings now do you know the meaning of the actually they graduated basically and they apologize to you and that's everything should be okay. Do you have to pretend like everything will be all right? Because those that has fallen in their hands, their family and their loved ones, to hell with them. We just apologize. We did it. Now, they will be reintegrated into the military formation. That is the reason why any military, you know, any military formation that will want to come up to tackle the menace of terrorist attacks in the north. 
you know what will do they will do to them they will transfer them or they will basically you know what they will do either they set him up there if they know that they will still use this person in future they will send him uh, somewhere else they will now they will send him to another mission to make sure he does not lead that attack on Boko Haram, on ISWAP, on Fulani terrorists because it is a bad market for them. So now the ones that are now in reintegrated, you believe that they will go into the bush and start killing people they have covenant with. People that you know make brainwash them, their God. You will think they will rebel against them. That is something you don't understand in Islamic law and the Islamic uh, belief system. Islamic belief system is a do or die extremist. Especially the type of Islamic belief system in Nigeria. It is that, you know, it is like that of Iran. No, Iran is actually more developed. And they even fair to her people more than what is happening in Nigeria under the skies of Islam. So, if you look at it, you will understand that these people, they are the tool. That they are the sacrificial lamb. They have devoted their lives to sacrifice to die for what they believe in, for their cause. That is the reason why, when even if you kill millions of them, it does not stop them until you make sure consistency is a way to eradicate terrorists in every nation. And every nation that is full of terrorism, it means that the leadership or the president or whoever that is in the presidency, they are the ones benefiting from the terrorist activities that is the way it is that is the way it is if if you understand science if you understand works of intelligence you will know that there is no way an anti-terrorist president will be on a position of presidency terrorists will be ravaging the country it is not possible. That is a sovereign nation. A sovereign nation that if they give, you know, command right now, Boko Haram will be eradicated in Nigeria. The highest thing it is going to take them that you might regret later. The highest thing. If that country is as poor as Zimbabwe or Malawi, as poor as Malawi, I will tell you they might end up going out there to source for help from the neighboring countries. Not to source for help from, from um, the western countries. No. No. That will be the, you know, that will be the biggest mistake. Because the leverage there, hey, you will never finish paying them. You will never finish, you know, coming, you know, you can't make it to end that leverage. Now, it is now very, very necessary for us to understand that these people have taken an oath to die. To fight the infidels. The people who does not believe in what they believe in. Regardless of how good you think you are with them. They are not good with you. That is the reason why if you remember during the time. The northern people started killing our people in the north. Even some of our people who started revenging. Killing the northern people in the east. You find some Igbo people going to hire some northern people in their house. Then they ended up killing their own, 
the, the person who harbored them, who made them friends, who gave them a place of safety, they killing them, killing their children, run away. That is religious extremism. Or will I say it is belief system that is very, very extreme. That is, they are very fanatical about that belief system. If I may use the right terminology. Because if these people whom you call, you know, Boko Haram, they, they were there. They were doing it. Small time. Their, their younger brother, Iswap, or their senior brother, whichever one, joined them. Before they came in, full and terrorists paved the way for them already. That is how it is. They are now united. Whenever you hear about a new set of Boko, a new set of terrorists in, in any country, if there is a particular terrorist in a country, you hear there is another new name or new brand that just come up into that country, you should simply know that there is another new raw material that is, the, you know, that, that is actually found in the area where these people are going to settle. That is the way it is. Because they will explore these raw materials. After exploration of these raw materials, they will sell it in a black market. And black market, of course, you know it will never give you what you deserve. And it will only exploit you knowing that you are under pressure. You are committing a crime here. So that is the way it is. So this is exactly the reason why you will never ever curb the menace of terrorist activities in Nigeria because people are benefiting from it. People are benefiting from it. That is the reason why I played the voice or the, the, the video of Donald Trump. What he said about the excessiveness of the United States to the world, to the rest of the world, especially the third world country called Africa, Nigeria, which is the leader of the Africa, giants, the third world country. Nigeria has been called a giant of Africa, but they kept Africa in the third world in the last 60 years, or in the last 100 years, rather. But they are giants. They are supposed to be the leader. They are supposed to be the biggest economy. They are supposed to be the United States of Africa. But because their plan was not to create the United States of Africa. Their plan was to create disastrous state of Africa. Their plan was to create time bomb taking type, type, type of Africa. That was their, that has been their plan. And the time bomb is very, very, you know, it is now so ripe that it can blow up at any given time. And that is because you have a terrorist mindset in the presidency. And those terrorist mindsets, they practice bureaucracy. You know, like these are bureaucrats. Within that formation of presidency, within that formation of presidency, if there is nobody who is giving information to terrorists, if there is nobody who is funding terrorism, if there is nobody who is actually jeopardizing and sabotaging the security of that nation for their own selfish and the Western agenda aggrandizement, you will, but you know, you will actually understand 
that there will be no terrorism in any country. And these things are being funded through NGOs. So many people might, uh, all the time, you won't understand this NGO is here. They are doing this. They are seeing to this um, um, victims of ter uh, terrorism. These NGOs are here. They are seeing to the victims of these attacks without you knowing that these, pe these people you are seeing as philanthropists, NGOs, that they are the funding machine. And they don't fund the terrorists directly. That is something that is very, very smart of them. They will never fund the terrorists directly. They will always have a, you know, onyama, onyama, onyama. They will have third party, first, um, second party, accomplices, um, linkage, um, TJ Hooker. So they will have this cycle, which is called a syndicate. In this syndicate, nobody knows who is calling the shot last last. And at the end of the day, that is the reason why so many atrocities that the West is committing in Africa. It, it, it will never ever circle back to them because we don't have intelligence. That is number one. We don't have intelligence in, in Africa. It will never circle back to them. And when eventually an, uh, somebody rise to be intelligent, the next thing they will do, they will use people around you to take you out. Because it is a syndicate. They are like region. They are like, a, you know, legion. They are, is it region? They are like legion. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. So that is the reason why they will always win if you allow them to still be in your life. I am not saying sever ties with them if you are, because this is now a general topic for Africa and the African continent. It is trying to make sure you know how to make a policy without being prejudiced by the West without anything. You know how to make your policy, stand by it, and make sure that they themselves respect your sovereignty as a nation. That is it. As long as the policy you are making, it is a policy that is constitutional in your country. You know what is constitutional? You must make a constitutional policies. Policies that is in line with your constitution. Those are the policies that you will make. Then, if they believe, if Facebook kick you out, bring yourself back up. You know, they keep on doing that. They keep on doing that. Once people come in, they limit it because they told me my page deserve to be uprooted and not to work. And I am broadcasting from that same page. So, it is a problem that when these people interfere in your policies whenever whichever policy you want to make they interfere with it which is a policy of not killing innocent people or policy of you know um policy of um you know killing people or like death sentence which is a policy of death sentence, they can actually talk about it, but not really dictate for you on how to go about this death sentence. Now, what am I trying to say? 
like the way Uganda is trying to make their policy on LG, um, LGBTQ Koya community. It is their policy. If the Ugandans saw it as something bad for them, Ugandans will come out and protest population or they might there must be a referendum if it is something that is very you know that is so you know sensitive then they, they will go through a referendum do we want this in this place or do we not want it then or has or then the majority takes it that we want lgbtq choir community to be legalized in this place so that it will nullify all these people who are in the West interfering with the people in the in Africa. It will nullify their opinion. Now they are now interfering in such thing, trying to fight this same thing that this country decided that they don't want lgbtq at least even if you don't like what they are trying to do you respect their constitution which gave them a sovereign nation or which made them to be a sovereign nation if there is any place where their constitution stated that you will re, you will actually you know approve this community to be you know to be legalized if you approve their you know their legality it means it is constitutional if it is not written in your constitution your the, you know it is not going to make sense if anybody want to challenge it because most of these constitutions we are derived and you know recopied from most of the colonialist um, you know ways it was not there why was it not there when they were there except those countries that just celebrated their independent you know you know before 30 years ago those might find such things in their constitution but what about those before that time why is it not found in their constitution now coming back to it if they are now pushing back that this particular you know policy is not going to stand in your country as a leader of your country commander in chief of your country and you obey them tomorrow they will bring military or they will make sure they sabotage the country that they have to bring their military surveillance in there and they will keep on saying they are checking up on you because we don't trust you or it will be like that or secret c all this c secret you know agents that is the way it is but if you make your policy you stand by it if the pushback is too much conduct a referendum because that is a policy you have seen as a person individual that will favor your country that is constitutional because that constitution is something that you people gathered and agree with right for that moment until it is amended you are actually compelled to obey that constitution if you are not obeying the constitution you are a you know you are a world criminal that is the reason why you will be tried in ICC international criminal court if they are not you know complicit today if they are not you will i say you know they are not selective in the terms of what they are going to look into if they are not selective you will understand 
that many Western leaders supposed to be in prison. Likewise, men, hundreds of African leaders supposed to be in prison. But because they pick and choose, they know that whoever that is committing this international crime or a crime against United Nations United um, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which they are supposed to be signatory to all of them. If those crimes does not, you know, as long as it violates them, they are supposed to start advocating. But they will only advocate when it comes to something that will not be beneficial to people. That will not be beneficial. When I talk about beneficial, I talk about when you think about this LGBTQ queer community, it is not beneficial to any country. I am, I am not being homophobic, but I'm being realistic. It is not beneficial to any country. Because what makes a nation great is the multiplication in their number. Additions to their number. That is what makes a, a nation great. Now, if you want to us to, you know, talk further on that. The reason why Donald Trump said that they need to increase fertility rate in America. It is because he understands as an entrepreneur, as a businessman or business tycoon, as an, a politician who wants something to help his nation, he knows that fertility rate of America is dwindling. And they actually need this number in order to, you know, place themselves in a particular scale in the world. But because their number is reducing, especially the number of the white Americans, that is the reason why they are introducing, making sure they promote LGBTQ queer community, even in everywhere in Africa, they promote it more so that it controls the fertility rates of African nations. Because a woman plus a woman cannot give birth. A man plus a man cannot give birth. This issue, it is not a natural cause. I have never seen a dog doing it to another dog or a goat doing it to another goat, no matter how, no matter how it is. It is not a natural something. I know it does not. Um, it is not a problem, but have if you start noticing the numbers of children, male children, that has been raped. Sorry for using that word, Facebook. That has been raped by their, you know, people who belong to the LGBTQ community in your in your societies. Number of children. They will be raped, especially they will be the family member. They will be a family member. They will do this crime. Because they are family member, they will not be reported. And when that child is growing up, that child automatically becomes bio. If he is supposed to be, he becomes bio. When a woman breaks his heart, he goes straight. He becomes homosexual. This is things... I have seen stories I have heard and watch it play out. And most of all these things, when you think about them, if I start talking about them, they will believe I am being homophobic. In my own culture and belief system, I am supposed to be homophobic. If I may put it in that manner, I am supposed to be. And 
I am not a fan of Hoya community. I am not a fan. I can never be. God created me to have children and multiply. He never created me to go and start looking for, you know, something that doesn't make sense. To him, as God, these things are, you know, man-made. And it only start, it, it's always starting where you expose your children. If one of them or some of them will walk up, walk up to you and tell you the truth, how they become these things, you will understand it started from their childhood, whom they were exposed to. And they will now bring them into that. From childhood. It is always like that. By the time they grow up, they don't even know what is, you know, relationship. Which they don't know what is opposite sex and uh, uh, negative sex. They don't know anymore. Because this is something they were introduced to. And not once, not twice, they were scared to speak. Some of them. It might be the uncle. It might be the favorite cousin. They will be scared to speak. I don't want to put this my uncle in, in, in trouble. I don't want to put this my favorite cousin in trouble. This is how it is always in, in the European communities. I can categorically tell you. In European communities. It has now started being in the, you know, in blacks communities right now. It has expanded. It continued to actually, you know, infect others. Then you would think it's a joke. Before you know it, people will start doing what they are not supposed to do. Tomorrow they will start fighting for right to legalize it. And at the end of the day, if you don't give them that right, um, the West will come and tell you, no, you must. No, you must. That is the way it is. Because they know it is a systematic way of reducing or keeping your pop, you know, population or fertility rate in check. One minus one is something. Believe you me. You might not know it. But those who are, you know, systematic about you and your well-being knows about it 100%. So that is the reason why they will promote such thing. Instead of promo promoting, you know, the, you know, uh, promoting the oppression, um, anti-oppression in Africa anti-human right violation in Africa. Just like Nigeria. Because it all circles back to Nigeria. If they start promoting anti-human right, you know, anti-violation um, of human right, anti-terrorism, anti-this, anti-that, and they will be very, very objective about it. And they will be determined, you know, they will determine to make sure that they achieve it. You will find all these small all these problems that you are facing, it will vanish to the thin air. Have you now seen how Arabian world or is actually uniting? Arabian world is uniting. <laughs> you know why? They are uniting to remove this shackle of bondage that has cleaved onto their neck in the last years, using some of them against themselves in the name of terrorism, in the name they are fighting each other. So they are uniting right now. Upon their unification, upon their unification, 
China is now a peaceful nation. The nation, they told us that they are the most violent. They did this, they did that. I know that they are very, very, you know, political about what they are doing. But people actually, you know, get more enticed with what they see. China is now peacekeeper. They went to you. He went to Russia. He said that it must only it must end with dialogue. Let there be peace. They are on the side of the peace. Mm -hmm. China went to Arab nation. He started uniting your Iran, uniting Amman, Syria, mm, United Arab Emirates. All of them. Very soon you will hear Turkey. They are now united boom now you will understand that book of isaiah getting closer the book of isaiah which you know i think is isaiah 13 it will now come to closer to manifestation Unification of the ancient Medes. Unification of the ancient Medes. If I can open that book of Isaiah. Now, the Medes. Let me see which Isaiah. Um, um, the number of the Isaiah. The, 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 the chapter. So that you will understand. One moment. Now let me. Okay. Let me try to open it up. Just one moment. I want to connect something and I want to show you something so that you will also understand the history. Because history will always repeat itself. It's up to you to notice when the change occur. But so many of us are so blind that they will not notice it. But let me show you this one is not actually a history, it is a prophecy. The book of Isaiah. Isaiah 13. Is it Isaiah 13? Yes, the book of Isaiah 13. If you if you have a Bible, you actually open it up to Isaiah 13. Use King James. And the reason why we are not here to learn Bible, but we are here to connect. A history and we are here to connect a prophecy the way it is it is not the one somebody will tell you I see but now look at it Isaiah 15 let me start from verse 13 I want you to pick up something pay very good attention therefore I will Therefore, I will shake heaven, and the earth shall remove out of her place. In the wrath, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as the chase roll, and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his people. They shall every man turn to his own people. And flee every one into his own land. Are you paying attention? Flee every man into his own land. Now verse 15 he says, Everyone that is found shall be, that, shall be thrust. Which is shall be thrust. They will slay you. That's what it means. Through, they will be thrust through, 
and every everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives shall ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meddles against them. We shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the ch of the Chaldees, excellency of the Chaldees' excellencies, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. This is a future prophecy, and this era of this prophecy is where we are at right now. And so many people are still looking for another prophet to come and tell them. This is the way it is. Every of this thing happening, it is already written unto us. That is the reason why I actually say that our ancestors they didn't do us good. Because they never withhold this and teach us the way and the manner that we should understand and live our lives. That we will not live a life in infamy. That is the reason why I blame them. Now... In this regard, it is talking about the medes. I want us to go through a dictionary. Let us find out what is medes. Because that is how you read Bible. Let us go to a dictionary. Let us find out what is medes. Definition of medes. Let us find it out. Well, how do you spell medes? It's M-E-D-E-S. M-E-D-E-S. Let us find out who they are. Okay. If you talk about mede, which is, or mead, um, M E D E, whichever one you call it, how you pronounce it. It talks about a member of an Indo European people who inhabited ancient media establishing, ancient media establishing extensive empire during the 7th century BC. Now, let us go to Medes. The mod okay, you can say what is the modern day Medes? Modern day Medes. M E D E S. Now it says, if we don't find what we are looking for in English dictionary, we are going to seek for it through etymology. Now let him, let us um, bring it to your context. The Medes were an ancient Iranian, Iranian people, and one of the ancestors of modern Kurdish people who lived in the north western portion of present day Iran. This is what Bible said. It is not what I said though. This is what Bible said. Now, have you now seen how the prophecy is working? Have you now seen how we are getting closer and closer and closer to the prophecy? Now, if Nigeria is declared Islamic State. Both your children, both the fetus in your womb, they will be dashed. They will be killed. If while they declare Islamic State, now all the Islamic States, they are now uni uniting across the world. Have you asked yourself, what is the reason why Nigeria strengthened their relationship with Iran? You don't know. I will tell you, because Islamic State want to unify. Islamic State, they want to unify. Because they are basically tired of being used against one another. And that is the reason why Islamic State 
must be declared in Nigeria so that it will be ruled under Islamic law, which is a law that is, according to them, it is not a bad thing. It is a good thing that takes you to heaven and sometimes give you 500 virgins. That is their law. And I'm not being prejudiced about their law. But the most important question is, do you believe in their law? Is their law the type of law you and your ancestors practiced? Why should it be opposed on you? Why must it be imposed on you? Then, if they imposes if they impose it on you in the next three and a half decade it becomes a norm to your children now those of you who are telling us i'm a hardcore christian a uh, christianity must dominate everywhere <laughs> you will no longer have that time to teach your children how to be a hardcore Christian. Those that the GOs, the only thing it will do to them, they will fly themselves abroad to go and be that the GO in. A place where they still pride that is not the Islamic nation. Because everything that you do as a Christian, they see you as an infidel. Do you know why? Because they see the way that you are so-called Christian. They know the origin of Christianity. They know how it comes. They know where it originated from. And it comes from their own enemy too. That is the reason why they will also, you know, but they are not telling you also about the origin of their religion. <laughs> they are not telling you. And they will not also tell you where it emanated from. And what and the funny things that it does. Because all this religion, they have their own, you know, problem. Because it is through that their religion that somebody will be convinced. Give him gun and bullet. Tell him go out there. Kill people. Butcher people. Just don't have mercy on these people. They are infidel. If you go to heaven, sometimes you have 500 virgins. If you kill it and die in the, in the, during the process. Then Christianity pastors will be there using Bible to exploit you. T give that an offering. I have one so that if you don't give that an offering, you are enemy to God. Without telling you that tight an offering is what you eat before God. And you will, if you are eating it before God, you, you know, it is like a feast in the house of God. The day of titan and offering, you come there, you invite people who does not have, you eat with them. Deuteronomy 14 starts from 20, good ayah to the end. Then you will understand the titan offering. So that is the reason why sometimes when I'm talking against these pastors, and according to the Bible, who said that they did let falsely, all of them, he never said, he said from the least to the greatest, they did let falsely. Because they are no longer following the ways of the Lord. They are no longer following the commandment of God. They tell you that uh, um, Jesus Christ with a blue, Anya blue, with a Komo guy, with red heart, we, uh, that he came and died and took away the law. Which is, it is like a, a, a person who call himself a citizen of a nation and he does not, they don't use constitution of that nation. A constitutionless country. That is a, a, a pastor that tells you that Jesus Christ has taken away the law. Ask that pastor. Go and commit fornication with somebody's wife. If the husband will not catch you and cut off your throat. Why is it a law? Why is it against the law? Go and steal people's stuff. If they will not catch you and burn you alive. Why is it against the law? When Christ, the, the Jesus Christ with Akomu guy, have made away with that law. Because it is the same law that so many countries actually selected or implemented their constitution. Why is making it and shaping it the way it will suit their selfish aggrandizement? That is how constitution on earth 
began. It is biblical. Now, somebody will tell you this constitution, no, they will see. Now, Jesus, it is about grace. And they will go and read Paul's letter to you. They will go and read the book of Galatians. After reading it, where Paul will say, we are not judged according to the, the, the commandment. We are now judged according to the grace. According to the grace. Now you ask Paul. The Paul that wrote to you. He said precept must be upon precept. Because Paul letter has its own cut up. If you, you see the way people complain that you went and cut my video. Paul's letter comes like this. Short, 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 short. He writes his letter. That you need to pick them up together. Bring it together in order to understand Paul's letter. In that book where it says, in the Galatians, where it says that it is not too long, it's no longer about the you know law. You are judged according to the grace. What is the law? The law is that man that the guy with Akomo guy with blue eyes is impersonating. When he came and died for the you know for our nation. You know what he did? He became the law. So that we don't we no longer need to go and buy animals and kill blood in the name of appeasing the God. So that he represented that sacrifice of where people are now making a lot of money from. Every priest, and that is the same thing they are doing. Every priest will now come during that time of Jesus Christ. We say that if you do anything, they will say, go and buy cow, go and buy goat, go and buy pigeon, go and buy this. Then they will be selling it. And we do everywhere. If I call it Walu, it will look like it is in Fendalose. As you see, Bokan Nasu. If I forget, whatever they will use to appease the, the Chukwokike, the God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Because what they're supposed to use to appease the gods, they will use it to appease themselves. That is the reason why Christ took it upon himself. Because he knows that he takes a blood to, you know, to replace a blood. He chose to be, he is a human being. Just like Mazen Namdekano have taken upon himself, he want to suffer for the sake of Biafra. Christ took it upon himself. Let me be this sacrificial lamb because the poor people are living in sin. In the name that they are going to appease for their sins. That is my culture and your culture that is watching. And they are no longer able to afford to buy this cow, goat, ram. And these people they are giving it to is not using it to appease the gods. They are using it to make money. Aroba afo obulomenana. And adroma ulundinze. That's where that, you know, adage was derived. And adroma ulundinze. And the same thing now as the world keeps evolving. The strategy of these same people keep changing. So, now you see, they are no longer taking cow and goat. They are taking tithe and offering. Because, you know, Christ, the real Christ, which is the lion of tribe of Judah. I told you from the Hebrew to Jeremiah, you saw he is a tribe of Judah. That's why he is called the lion of tribe of Judah. He is the one who died and he become the law. And he says, no one cometh to my father except through me, the law. That is exactly the context of Christ, the role of Christ. And if you want to contextualize it to the freedom, Mazen Nam De Kano became the sacrificial lamb. So that you will know how important it is to get freedom. That's exactly the way it is. Now, so many of you who does not understand this context. 
you will think that judge money is exaggerating or you will think that judge money is just speaking he is a taste you don't believe in god you don't believe in this thing because i say i am i don't believe in christianity the reason why i say i don't believe in christianity is that there are you know they pick and choose what benefits them and they start selling the agenda that is the replica of what the West is doing with Africa. They pick and choose policies that favors them. And they will initiate it in Africa. And promote it. Use mainstream media. Make sure it happens. So it is from the lower echelon to the higher echelon. Which is the West is the higher echelon. Pastors is the... Yeah, um, your politicians is the middle echelon. Your pastors is from is the lower echelon. That is how this neo-colonialist graded or actually set up their agenda and their structure, and it is playing like a program. This one does its damage. This one will think that you think that this one is going to repair the damage this one is doing without you knowing that this one you are embracing is destroying you more than the one you are running from. When the president cause a chaos in the country, bring terrorists to kill you, cause hunger and starvation, high, high inflation rate because they, can, they are not um, innovative, they don't know how to diversify issues, they are just there for looting. You will find out the country is full of crime, full of poverty, full of everything. Now, the Christianity now comes in. Pastors, they will come in. When these pastors come in, they will pray that it will be well with you and Lono, but not to be well with the country. It will never be well with the country, no matter the amount of prayer they will pray. It will never be well with the country because they are working with the situation of the country. If that situation is not in that country, you will not be under pressure to be God and tighten an offering after they must have brainwashed you. That if you don't tight, you will be in tight corner. So if not so, those such situations, they will start kicking you out. Bring yourself back up. So if not such situations, you will not be going to these people to exploit you. Believe you me. I believe you me. I stand in the covenant of Chukwu Kikabiyama to tell you this. I did not say give me money for the sake of telling you the truth. But the truth is what I am telling you and you will not like it because you did not grow up hearing it this way. That is the reason why it will be so difficult for you to digest it or for you to say let me acknowledge it. You will be thinking about it. You will be seeing it. Then the next second thought will come. No. It is always like that. But when you understand science, you understand mathematics, you will know that this is psychology. They will use it to twist your mind. They will beat you this side. You will think that this person is going to pet you. Not knowing that this person is exploiting you in the name of petting you. Consolidating with your problem. Exploiting you. And at the end of the day, your mind, it becomes a norm to your mind. This one is consolidating. People are giving testimony. But you never give. You have never given Every day, people are giving. You have never given. Why aren't you giving? Because you are not paid money to come and give testimony. Until you are paid money to come and give testimony, you are linked by somebody or the set up, give you a prophecy, follow the back, fulfill it for you, that you may come and give testimony. That's what they do. They will give you a prophecy. Use somebody that knows you. To fulfill it. Then you will think. That this person. Ah that is my testimony. Then does it continue? No. After some days it, or months. It vanishes from the thin air. 
you, that will be no longer a miracle. You go back to tight corner. And they will tell you because you didn't pay enough tight. You didn't pay enough tight. Now you have to now say, let me appease God. You go even borrow money to give tight in the church. Ha! They will be using toothpick. Now I tell them, they will be flying private jets. Because your mind is positioned in such a way that this church is going to be your healer. Healer that heals you from every... No matter what that situation is, this church is my healer. That's why it says they deal it falsely. That is the reason why they cannot teach you the Bible. They cannot tell you the prophecies because it is their duty to know all these prophecies written in the Bible when it is going to come. They will follow the algorithm, tell you when it is going to come, tell you this is how it is going to happen, give you the signs, then you will understand and tell you what to do in order to escape it or to avert it. But they will not do it. Because they are not in line anymore. They will not make money doing it. So that is the reason why. And that is Christianity. For you. That is the reason why Bible told you that Jesus, um, God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. For the sake of particular topic. Of particular people. And those are the things that you are being forced today to acquire or to, to, to basically, you know, accept. They will force you to accept it because they are bringing Sodom to the whole world now. Because God, you know, challenged the Satan that he destroyed Sodom. Now, Satan want to make the whole world, including the world of God, to be like Sodom. Believing that God will look at all, all of it. And he said to himself already, I will not destroy the world. His world is his bond. And because he cannot destroy the world, the devil want to make the whole world to be a Sodom. And when this, it becomes a Sodom, believing that it will not. But at the end of the day, God will select those who are his. Send them to a place of safety. The same way he is calling those our people in Lagos State. The same way he is calling our people in Lagos State. And calling them to go back to their land. They are actually ignoring it believing that um, nigeria has always been like this uh, they will do maga 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 nkawaga once itinubu is sworn in nkawaga that is what you will be telling yourself but he said it will be like a chest row when that time comes it will be like a chest row where everybody will be running, children will be dashed, pregnant women will be killed, children, the, the fetus in their stomach will be removed, it will be killed. That is the prophecy. And it is coming. Because the ancient Medes is rising up. They are realizing whom they are. They are realizing their purpose. And their purpose is to conquer the world. And the, the conquering of the world, they will destroy one problem. And when they finish destroying this problem, and they will conquer you. And it is not as if they are not going to destroy one problem. The problem that is putting, keeping you down, it is ordained that they will be destroyed. The Babylon. The Babylon. Because... <laughs> you know, when you hear about the world Babylon in the Bible or in the story of the Bible or Bible text, you will believe that this um, word uh, that you are hearing, it is about um, theory. Never happened really. 
the world of Babylon was collapsed. But that was present continuous terms. The walls of Babylon. Present continuous text in our terms. Now, the reason why it continues, it is because the walls of Babylon was destroyed. And they now shifted. Thinking that they have now seen the strategy which God used to destroy the walls of Babylon. They now want to re-strategize. They now extended it. The walls of Babylon, it is the West. It is the people, the land of West. And the head of Babylon, it is the United States. The countries that is living in the north. If you want us to show you, in, if you want me to show you in the Bible, maybe it is also written here. It told you about the country that is living in the north, in the northern part of hemisphere. They are the, the new Babylon. And those are the people that will be dashed. Those are the people that will be slain by the ancient Medes. The ancient Medes is arising. But we will see to that. As long as you get ready and make sure the ancient Medes does not come and now start ruling over you again. While they are advancing, you need to start advancing those who say they are going to die for Christianity. The time has come. The time has come. If you believe that Christianity leads you to freedom, die for it. If you believe it does not lead you to freedom, don't die for it. But think well before you engage. Make sure you make a right decision. Because nobody, you are going, you are going to blame no one. If eventually, you, 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 when you finish, you find out that the, the Christian you are following is not the right one. Because God cannot use your oppressor to create a platform that you use to praise him and worship him and, you know, pray him. He cannot give it to you through your oppressors. It can only come through your people, through your ancestral origin. Chonu Jehovah, Mwega Chotaya, Bokuya, Mwe Ononso. Because, oh God, Rosie, oh God, Rosie, there is no more time. That I can assure you, there is no more time. People believe that it is about what they are going to achieve because they don't even try to peep back home. Some of, of you outside Nigeria, you don't even try to peep back home. Do you know it came to a time where people were buying land in Lagos. It was in 2020. Oh, no. Was it in 2020 before COVID? 2019. Before COVID. You know, land agents came. Land agents, you know, we sat with them from land agents from Lagos. You know, we sat with them. You know, they just traveled to go to abroad to market the lands in Lagos. They were, you know, they visited me and uh, some of my, you know, friends. And they introduced land to us. I saw people buying land of 100 million, buying land of 200 million, buying land of 300 million. Not one land though, because it starts with cheap. It starts cheap. It starts me. There is one 2.5 million naira. 1.5 million naira. Then you see somebody buying hectares. In Lagos. You know what I said to myself? You know, the agent was quite convincing. He was quite convincing. And they will give you actually a payment terms. You, it is not something you will pay immediately. You can, if you buy a land of 10 million, 
you can actually pay maybe five million. Commit. If you make it now your problem. If you don't make them to finish it now your problem. So in my before my eyes, somebody bought a, 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 a you know land of more than two hundred million naira. Now and uh, <laughs> I was also advised to go for it. <laughs> I, th I thought about it. I remember the prophecy. I said no. I say, I'd rather go back home and do whatever I want to do there. And I am the one laughing today. <laughs> because uh, when you are thinking about your mansion in Lagos, <laughs> You know, I will be thinking of upgrading my crib. My crib in my land. Because your mansion will be giving you a heart attack in Lagos. Your land of 200 million will be giving you a heart attack. My crib of 100,000 naira in Biafra land will be giving me peace. That is the way it is. I, if 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 it if it wasn't for this prophecy, I you know from the Bible, I was going to also engage. This time around, I will be under pressure. What will I do? Looking for who to sell it. If you get any Yahoo boy, where be your robber? Where sabi waiting to happen? If he give you half price, if you buy two hundred, if he give you maybe even fifty million, that is a plan land grabs so at the end of the day you will now put one or two together to understand exactly where we are going there is an agenda to declare islamic state and that is the reason why boko haram i swap all of them will be very you know serious with what they are doing because the West will, you know, might believe that these people are promoting their own agenda this time around, not knowing that they have united and they will start promoting their own agenda because the world is about survival. They have realized that they need to survive because whoever that recruits them is one of them that speak good English, that will be able to communicate or that speak the Western language that will be able to communicate. So that is one of them. And now, at the end of using them, they will be deployed another place to go and fight terrorism. If they're done using them in a particular country, they will be deployed another place as a military to go and fight terrorism. <laughs> so... This is something that is uh, there. You do do benam bukweni ebumak because you don't know how to engage it. So, in this regard, if you have ears, hear it. If you don't have ears, stay in your ignorant. Now, let us go now to tell you the reason why Mazen Namdekan is being passed. You know, it be, is now going to be. Buhari's inheritance. You know, the reason why they want to make Mazen Namdekano's Buhari, uh, Namdekano Buhari's inheritance, it is only but one reason. Just like you have seen them causing animosity because they, they came to us, <clears throat> some Yorubas who claim they were fighting for freedom. They came to us in the name that they are fighting for freedom. And so many of us embrace them. Some of them. There are still people whom they convinced that are actually believing in self-determination for real. Now some of them believe they are fighting for freedom. Now all of a sudden, you, don't, you didn't know that Britain is preparing them. And now when they were being prepared, let me show you what happened that we didn't pick up. Let me show you something that happened that we did we refused to pick up while they were preparing these people. Pay attention to this video I'm going to show you.
northern consensus movement let me pause it so that i will be i'll be hearing it i will be hearing it late i'll be hearing it late so but let me let me try and play it. again it doesn't matter i will i will hear it retreated their stand to stand against any southern president come 2023 as the governors in the south oppose open grazing which is livelihood of Fulanese in the north addressing pressmen in abuja today the president of the group comrade Awar, said nigerians are not happy with the, with what southern governors are doing he said the northerners will not accept to vote anyone that is not from the north in 2023 with the arrangement of opposing open grazing Completely refuse to adhere to the provision that the president is trying to make just because they have an innermost plan they have a plan they have uh, a thinking they have a, 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 a motive that they are trying to execute that is the reason why they decided to refuse to comply with that and in any case this is a political situation. We are in a political government. And under a political dispensation, uh, the voice of the people is the voice of government. Government has no authority on its own. Whoever become a governor, a president, a senator, a member of House of Reps, a member of the House of Assembly, or a local government chairman is doing that on the neck of Nigerians.
Sorry, 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 sorry for that. Sorry for that. I didn't. Thank you very much, um, Omote Barista, Omote Biafra TV. Thank you very much, my sister. Thank you very much. Now, these people, they knew what they were planning. They tell you it is not going to the north, to the south. The reason why they told you it is not going to the south, it is only because these people, they know that if we take this um, mandate and just give it to Pitobi, it means the relationship between Yoruba and Biafrans, it will be in more intact. But instead of us doing it, let us create this conundrum. In a situation whereby the Yoruba people will think we are doing them a favor by rigging an election on their behalf. Without knowing that they have put up their plan in place. The back man, the second president, which is the vice, is the strong man. The man put in front is a Yoruba man who wants power at all costs. And everything, anything can serve. Now, they gave it to him. Knowing that if today if Tinubu die, if Tinubu fall ill today and die today, believe you me, they will never report it. They will swear him in. If they have to report it, they have to report it after three or six months. But they will make sure they swear him in for the sake of the vice. Because the vice is the reason why these people started you know, make paving ways by telling you we are not go taking it to the south. They come to a resolution. We have to put a Muslim Muslim ticket. We have to put it, make sure that we give it to this um, Yoruba man. And of course, we will take a lot of money out from him. He must not have enough because we will make sure we drain him. They now took money from him, made him there president elect now they now push up an agenda and say that uh, a euro um, uh, Ibo man that Ibo man said Lagos is a no man's land uh, Ibo woman said Lagos is a no man's land to now activate the real reason why they placed Inubu there now um, Tinubu now activated it quickly by releasing some hoodlums. Because he knows that everybody rallied about obedient or, or whatever they call themselves. That now obedient people who are seen to be evil, including outside people who are obedient, they are all seen to be evil today. Any, co any co um, comment they make, any sentiment they make, it is Igbo man that makes it as long as they say they will be obedient. Now so it be. As it stands now. Now that is the reason why Tinubu released some hoodlums. And uh, you know, with Femi Fanekayo they promote motivating such rubbish. And uh, or oh, is it Remy or 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 Omori or um, Olomo, Kalomo? Now fueling it because he knows the youth, he knows these rascals. Now it boils down that they become a group of syndicate. Now it is now they are very very organized. They are organized criminals. For the sake of what this man said here. That was when they started planning their move. And this their move. They say it is not going to the south. And he ended up saying that they have the numbers. And they tell you that the, the northern people are more than 100 and, uh, 175 million. That's what he gave to himself. That the north is more than 175 million. Uh, but let me make sure. Let me play it further. Let's pay attention. Nigerians are not happy with what these governors are doing. Even within the state that they reside, the people that they think are the members or the citizens or indigents 
of those states that they think they are, are truly not happy with this because we have received several complaints, even from the Yorubas themselves, that their governors are doing what they are doing. And again, like I said, we are under a political dispensation. And these same people are saying that they needed power in 2023. I wonder how we, the northerners, will accept to vote anybody that is not a northerner in 2023 with this kind of arrangement that is going on, that openly, even though you, even as at this time that you are not in government, you are already indicating that you cannot unite the country. You are already doing, uh, you are already segregating Ted, against Nigerians. That even you are the already Yorubas um, depriving some Nigerians thing. from their means even of the Yorubas did the Now same that thing. you have not been given the opportunity to leave Nigeria, you are already doing this. Coming. Then what more if we decide to accept that we will support the any candidate from the south, the uh, southern part of Nigeria, Nigeria, it means the north will be and gone. The rest of I think this is also a better and stronger and basis Yoruba within which we will continue to climb on and call on our that. people to know that now, they cannot they are, have, they and have should that not number. And should so never, how and we will not allow through the bylaw box the anybody that will not unite this country to be the next the president of Nigeria in 2023. Because automatically, you have indicated that you cannot hold this country together. Law. If you are given the opportunity to lead, you are only going to divide. Because what you are doing Greece. now is a method of division. Of it's an indirect and, uh, dividing the country. Because where you deprive me of my means of livelihood, and what else do you expect me to do? What else? And we are talking of crime, crime now, and criminality. And we are trying to see to it that crime man. and criminality is reduced to the barest minimum. The government at the center is doing... So why do you think that they selected the old man that cannot say, will not be able to do anything, but the old man that will that have a permanent hospital bed in France, a permanent hospital bed in UK is what they selected. Knowing that even if they, they end him, he, he's been sickly. He's never been strong. That will be the, the slogan. So at the end of the day, these guys didn't see the scene of Yorubas as a sin because they want to use Yorubas and they quench the fire that is burning, which is at the Biafrans. Because this fire, if we allow this fire to burn, it will burn the whole Nigeria. Everyone will start believing in self-determination. So let's use Yoruba against these people. The people that they have actually, you know, motivated to fight for their rights. Let's use them against each other. They made the, same, the comment and the war starts. But Ndibo, I'm looking at you. You are keeping quiet. People just come to the media and talk. Instead of saying that we have made provisions, telling, telling our people straight, start going back home. Start going back home. The sign is for you to go back home. It is a good sign. And if you refuse to go back home, I don't know what will be in the next, you know, two weeks, one month, one year. You don't know. Because the ticking time bomb is going to explode eventually for Islamization to come. Now, I want you to see, to continue listening to what this guy said here. Remember, the both of West and the East committed the crime, the same crime, but the West is going to be favored, you know, against the East, so that the East, those in Lagos, will start calling you. Uh, please, our property in Lagos, we own half of Lagos. Joey Bokwe, who say he will never go back home again. Joey Bokwe will be telling you if you go back home. In that small place, where would you be? In that small place, who, where would you be? That is what Joe Ibokwe will be telling you. Because Joe Ibokwe is a blind man that wants to recruit other blinds to his side. 
and uh, you know that those are politicians where is joy Boko today his property or said yeah, his property will be among that will be demolished that will be destroyed that will be taken away by this yoruba rascals now at the end of the day um you will now see the manifestation of this initial plan happening listen to it i want us to get to where he talked about the number of the northern Nigeria. everything humanly possible to ensure that crime and criminality across the federation is being reduced to the barest minimum but by this act you are indirectly instigating violence you are indirectly instigating uh, instigating chaos you are indirectly uh, you know uh, expressing that you are not willing to continue to uh, you know to harbor other nigerians from the other part uh, of the country that are resident in you and i have said it before i'm going to repeat it again in the in kano and kaduna alone you have more than 19 million i mean in the entire northern nigeria you have more than 19 million uh, yorubas resident in the entire in the 19 northern state kano and kaduna alone you, you are not willing you are not willing to harbor other Nigerians. That is the, what the North said because you would stop the terrorists from using cattle grazing, op cattle and open grazing to actually, you know, commit their terrorist activities. You stopped it. That is the reason why they say you cannot harbor other, you know, ethnicities in your land because you stop terrorism. Now they have to return the favor and they have to use both of you who passed that law to actually revenge for themselves that is what they are trying to do they're using both of you yoruba and the bear friends to revenge for themselves that is politics and that is the you know it is actually more like neoconservatives the mindset of neoconservatives. It is exactly what these people are doing. And the Yoruba people, whom I believe they are well, you know, they have a lot of educated people. They are well educated. And uh, <laughs> they allow a guy man. They allow a, a man that is basically, how what will I say? Is not going to benefit them anything. He, he, a man that will not even be there for a long time. They allow him to use him to destroy your world that he is not going to be part of. That is what these people use Tinubu to do then once his his work is done they will wave at him give him a flower then the vice president will come in that is the plan listen to the number of now um these people before we go to wazurike and not only resident these guys owns personal property land farmland houses and shops and what have you and we live with these people peacefully we try as much as we can to protect them to protect their lives to protect their properties why is it that the properties and the lives of our own people that are resident in your own state is not being protected is not being guided that is not to say that we don't know what we are doing we are not fools we also have feelings the way you have feelings we think the way you think we can act the way you act but we have been trying as much as we can to restrain our people from taking the laws into their hands and by what you are doing you are instigating violence so we are saying that the southern governors should go back and have a rethink of this their policy we don't have problem with their policy for as long as they are going to provide an alternative for our people that are resident there most especially with this grazing issue if they are going to provide alternative for the fulanese provide build uh, grazing reserves for them and then let them go into the grazing reserve and be paying you uh, on, on meritorium or even if it is rent on a monthly basis. But you are passing a law that says you do not want to see a single cow moving on the street. 
you do not want to see a single cow moving on the street, and you do not provide an alternative for them. For God's sake, how will they feed those animals? How? How will they be able to feed these animals? And you keep on arresting these animals and also charging fees, arresting, charging, and collecting fees from the full animals that are innocently, innocently trying to find a way of uh, uh, put, putting ends uh, together. We are saying no to this. And we are also made to understand a lot of these charges that were being given, there's even no receipt for the charges. You only charge them, and at the end of the day, they leave, uh, you leave, uh, uh, arrest their cows, and then charge them exorbitantly before releasing the cows, and the next three days you come back and re-arrest again. It, this is not the best way of revenue generation. If you want to generate revenue, you should do build ranches. After building the ranches, then you can enact your law, then push the fullness into the ranch. Those that refuse to obey those laws, now we now know that they deliberately refuse to obey the laws, and we are law-abiding citizens, northerners, are law abiding, we are Nigerians, we believe in Nigeria, we respect the laws of Nigeria. We will never break the law, we will never support breaking the law of the Federation, but you should also not instigate but you should also let me interject where he said you build the ranches. Don't forget, let me interject. You build the ranches, but Biafrans promoted animal husbandry including andy okonkwo um what is his name andy when he was an apc when when he was apc he proposed animal husbandry is that not uh, ranching is that not part of ranching but the, 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 the president in place or the cabals in Asorok does not want it because they know if they, if they start doing it, you will be able to monitor the amount of people so that there will be no more influx of Fulanese who does not have destination into your land. They nullify that idea. They nullified it. Today they are coming to tell you, um, they now let her tell you why you didn't build um, um, open grazing, um, animal, um, what do you call it, animal husbandry, which is ranching. Why did you not uh, introduce ranching? So to make you to look like you are the aggressor. That is what these people want to make you. They made you the aggressor. Even they are, they know that they are people. They don't just kill people with a gun. Shum, shum, you are die, dead. But they will slice you. They will butcher you to the extent that you don't want to look at them. Now they make it your problem. Because they cannot control. Because they cannot come into your land and control it and take over your land. In the name of open grazing in the 21st century. Open grazing. In the first fourth industrial revolution, open grazing, dude, it doesn't make sense. Down, they want to now pay you back. You say it is triggering violent, violent. The violent now they have used their own politics to cause it amongst you. Instead of you uniting against this common enemy called the Fulani. You are now fighting yourselves. Not fighting yourself. They are now using Yoruba people to kill, to harm, to destroy your livelihood. Remember that they believe that it is their, full, their cow that uh, when you arrest their cow, then they have to destroy your market, your businesses. That is the reason why. Because the cow is more important than the people that they are killing in your land the cow is important that you will be in lagos doing your business you know peacefully you will hear a news that uh, fulani just butchered your mother or fulani just uh, raped your mother where she went to farm or fulani just cut your sister into pieces how will that news sound in your ears it won't sound good right so think about it
and come to a resolution that these people are playing a game of mind a game of chase that is meant for the masters and you don't want to be the master you want to be the slave so let's continue breaking the law because what you are doing you are instigating violence indirectly with this i will rest my case gentlemen of the press if you have any question i'm here to answer that is the stand of that's not just the group we speak for northern nigeria this is the stand of northern nigeria the stand of northern nigeria in 2023 is that the north still have a balance of four years and will continue uh we will make sure that we balance of our four years before moving power we were even beginning to think that we can consider our brothers because politics is all about number we have the numbers we have the numbers we have the voting strength and you cannot become a president when you don't have the majority of vote we have the majority of vote we were willing to give that majority of vote to other part of nigerians that we feel will harmonize unite and move the country forward but we understand by this act now it is clear to us that it is good that we are standing on our position. It is good that we, we are still insisting that the North will continue until after, 20, uh, after 2023, until after four years. Then we can now come into roundtable and begin to negotiate. By the act of the governors of the South, uh, 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 Southwestern State, it is clear that they cannot, if any of them or anybody from that part come, becomes a president, he cannot unite this country. He will not unite this country. He will not work towards the general and national interest of Nigeria. And we, the Northerners, are known to be fair in judgment. We are fair in thinking and we are fair in leadership. And that was why today, if you go, you find that the, most of the infrastructural development that has taken place under the present Northern leadership is done in the southwestern part of Nigeria and the southeastern part, with a very little of it taking place in the northern part of Nigeria. Even with that, the southerners and the easterners are still complaining of marginalization and what have you. And then if you give, if this act has indicated that if given the opportunity, then we are going to be slaves in our own country. For this, we are insisting that the North will continue to hold on to power. We have the vote. Whoever that needed to be a president should go and contest under a political party and then let his credibility sell him and let the votes count. Let the vote decide who becomes the next Nigeria's president.
What the hell? Um, I'm, I, I, I get it. I get it, uh, comrade. I get it. I get it. I am muted. Oh, sorry about that. I hope is what the reason why you are calling, right? Yes. 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 Okay, I will call you. Let me call you back. Let me call you back. So, they want to... I hope you heard what they said here. Sorry for that voice that was not there. You heard what they said here. That they are not going to take... They are not going to take anybody from anywhere. That your, um, the North must complete the four years. That politics is a game of number and they have the number strength. So they have to choose this old man. Old man that is, in, that is already closer to his grave. And if he doesn't happen quickly as they want, if they kill him, it is justified. Because everyone have seen a video that Femi Faneka Yode has shared in the past years, in the past three years about the old man so everybody already know that this old man is ill so now the four years it is not averted the northern four years that they say they must take before they will think about the other it is not averted it's just that so many people don't understand the politics now that four years is what they have put shetima to cover up because of course Utinubu will not last there for up to two years he will not last there for up to two years if he has to anything has to happen to him today it, they will not report it until they swear him in and after some times they will tell you he has fallen ill he died that is their plan it will look like a boring story or a boring information that I am giving you because we keep telling you that the man in Asorok is not whom you voted in 2015. Because nobody moved a motion to find out. Nobody tried to push to have a DNA done. That is because you will be seeing your problem. You cannot see a solution to it. You can never ap apply it. And we are, say we are saying it. We keep on saying it. None of you try to actually find out what these people are. What are they saying? Is it really correct? Is IPOB dishing out disinformation and misinformation? Is it really what these people... Let us find out. Let us conduct a DNA on this man to find out if this organization is actually representing what they say. But they will not investigate you. They will not try to find out the facts about your cry your cry they will not even if they find it out it is not going to actually favor the agenda of those who are in charge so they have to conceal it so have you now seen the reason why they have to make you be where you are so that they will continue to buy you over they have placed Tinubu there not only that they place him there they make sure that they bankrupt him, almost bankrupt him. He spent a lot. He spent a lot for the sake of this election. They returned that money that he has actually acquired, the wealth. They took half of it in the name they are going to give him presidency. But the end game is the A game, which is a game that you know, people will be surprised. Because the four years must happen. Four years must happen. That was the promise of these people. Take out Tinubu, put Tinubu there, use him and divide Yoruba and the Igbo. Then take him out. Of course, Yoruba don't have strength to agitate. You know, they don't have strength to agitate. Mm. Omo Ibo, once Yoruba and Ibo start fighting, um, oh, of course, uh, Ibos uh, will lose um, focus or the, their, their 
agitation for Biafra will start, they will start losing, you know, focus and uh, they will believe that it is all about the whole world against them. While Mazen Nam the Kanu is kept in the solitary confinement not to, you know, influence anybody with his, you know, rare wisdom. So, while they are doing it, they are now planning for their four years. Their four years is going to happen. At whose peril? At all of your peril. Because we told you, do not start championing Obi. Obi is not going anywhere. Do not start championing Obi. Use that time. Utilize that time and do something productive that is going to help me and you. Then you continue to champion Obi because you believe that IPOB is just one crazy organization that do weird things. That is your belief. We do weird things. Where people are, are going, I am not bandiazu. That is according to you. You believe that IPOB is not bandiazu. But you don't know this IPOB is organization. We have gone across the West, the Western world. We have seen development. We have seen structure. We have seen constitution being upheld. We have seen judiciary working. We have seen human rights being upholded. We have seen, you know, the right of everybody, you know, been maintained we have seen the grants funds how government can establish other people you know through funding them funding their initiatives we have seen all these things we have seen the best of the best and we have seen how they are obtained we now wanted to bring it home that is the reason why they, it looks like those that is outside Nigeria are the ones who are pushing more than anything else for our people to get their independence and get their freedom. Because they know that the way we have learned from other nations that are the first world countries, the way we have learned from them, we can implement this. And if we implement it, we are going to have the best nation in Africa. So that is exactly what these neo-colonialists don't want. That is exactly the reason why they are using some of the people you are fighting to liberate. They use them to kill your morale, to kill your spirit, to make sure that you lose focus. Sometimes they use them to bribe you to start preaching between, from both sides of your mouth. But this time around, the way they come, they came psychologically. They came in a way that a, a lame man will never understand the move. Agent provocateur was there. It didn't work. Because it is a, they have strategized their plan beforehand. Proactive they were. Believing that IPOB is only reactive. Because they, they use some criminals in order to manipulate us when they kidnap Mazen Nam the Kano. They now believe or they will portray it that IPOB is only reactive. They are not proactive. They made their plan to be proactive so that by the time IPOB will know what is going on, they have established their plan. That is the reason why they release, they remove Mazen Nam the Kano because he's so they know and they trust that this man is proactive. He see them before they see him, without knowing that this man you see has actually empowered many, has actually given birth to many. That is what they did not know. Now, let's put this man inside. We will be playing game of time. And while we do this manipulation, by the time he comes out, everything is a mess. They put him inside. They release the agent provocateur, which is a Berima in Finland. From there, they manipulated the, some of the members of Mazi family. 
They used some of their his brothers, his sibling. And at the end of the day, to make sure that we are distracted. But little did they know. If I don't hear it, Methuselah will hear it. If Methuselah does not hear it, Wachineke will hear it. If Wachineke does not hear it, Idudu will hear it. If Idudu does not hear it, Ikenga will hear it. If Ikenga does not hear it, Omote Biafra will hear it. If if Ostra man does not hear it, Emo Maze, you know, Isaiah Oba will hear it. If they don't hear it, Maze China Samoru is also there. Watchdog, community watchdog. He will hear it. So, if he does not hear it, you will find our comrade, upcoming comrades that are, you know, new to the media. They will hear it. Then the bigger ones will take it and enjoy sharing it. You know, at the end of the day, have you now seen how we are able to be proactive? Because we are legion. We are legion. And we don't actually forgive or forget. As long as you are a bona fide, you know, committed in IPOB, you will never, ever, you know, give in. And that is how we are able to see, to tell you, P2B will not do anything for you. P2B will not favor you. P2B is a means of manipulation. P2B is a means of time wasting. P2B is a way. If have you seen now what P2B resulted? Ibo Yoruba, Ibo business being destroyed because of P2B. Because of who? P2B. Mazen Nam the Kano in the DSS dungeon. Because of who? P2B. They uh, it's prolonged the release of Mazen Nam the Kano because you use your platform to promote P2B. That is why. And we kept on telling you, P2B is not going to help you. He is not going to, he brought, he was brought in, I said it several occasions, in my platform here, that he was brought in to make you to lose focus, to make you to divert the attention and the time. Have you seen what Devil Omahi said? Devil Omahi confirmed that Mwike stole the, the, the vote of River State and gave it to their Tinubu, to their APC. That it is God. He said it is God who did it. Because you, what God will say it will be, will be. The same thing that you claim that God will say it will be because as a Christian you are. You will quote it what, you don't make mistake in quoting those things you quote. What God say will be, will be. Then, your people, businesses are being ruined. You didn't say anything. All you say is you congratulate the people who are fueling it. Who are the mastermind of your people's business being ruined in Lego State. Now, come to think about it. Are these the same people you want to, you know, look at them? And call them your representatives. These are the people that need to be chased away from your life. You need to evict them from your side. You need to make sure that their shadow does not pass you. Because these are evil men. Gangs of reprobates. That is what they are. You now see an APC is now in good terms with the PDP candidates. Praising him. You gave us a uh, river state. We care that is when we can finish drink alcohol. And Chichenko Nechinimi. He will be his brain will be turning upside down. They have used him once more. What Mwike have done to <laughs> Ibo race can never be erased. It will never ever be erased. 
no matter how much he repented. These are the people will be in the list of those we are going to ostracize. That we go that we are going to ostracize from the society. You know why? Because these people are evil. They are selfish. Likewise, they will my hope who them. These are people who are gangsters from their you know youth age. They use their gangsterism to pave way into politics. What do you think? And they're not just gangsters, dangerous gangsters. They pave their way into politics. What do you think that is going to be the end game or the display? That is what you are seeing right now. Because they, have, they are using the willing tools amongst you to prolong your freedom. What are you going to do as a person who have discovered that it is your freedom that will make you to be like Japan in Africa? Or better than Japan, not just a Japan. We, you will be better than Japan and greater than United States of America. Only if you have freedom. And that is what this neocolonialist does not want. Because during the time when we were actually fighting the war, you saw and you noticed that gun and bullet was not supplied to us. Russia supplied Nigeria military weapons to fight Biafra. Egypt were the ones who drive the bomber, the, the chopper. And uh, there are Britain, they are the mastermind, giving the formation of how to, you know, offensive and the defensive. That is, that is Britain. And is making sure they use their proxies to supply weapons to Nigeria, different dangerous weapons to Nigeria, which we don't know what killed 5 million women and children. We don't know whether it's a, it's a weapon or maybe sort of biological weapon that changed their DNA, that's supposed to change their DNA. At the end of the day, it changed their life. They died. And they call it Kwashoko because they had to close the food supply to make sure that they release whatever that killed our people. And that was a tactical nuclear weapon. That was what Britain used against our people. If you look at the way it is right now, hunger cannot kill our people in that regard. Hunger. No. It is a kind of tactical nuclear weapon they use on Biafrans to eradicate Biafrans. But God say no. You cannot eradicate these people. We, we are standing alone building the ammunitions that we used to fight. The time French government want to supply Ojuku some weapon, that was the reason why you start hearing people teaching you French in high school. Because French was a kind of our allies. Even though they have their own agenda, Britain made sure they used BBC to sabotage French to stop. You see Russia today, Britain manipulated them to fight Biafrans. And that is the reason why I believe there is a role Russia has to play in restoration of Biafra. Because it is time for their restitution and retribution. It is time. So these people fought against Biafrans. Yet they couldn't clean us. We were building our weapon, fighting and pushing offensive while pushing defensive. But the biggest mistake we made, we allowed the war to come into our land. The war was fight fought in our land. That is the reason why this time around, wherever it begins, start it there. We will send you recruitment. Wherever it is going to begin, you know, actually push back from there because if you allow it to come home the weak ones will not ha know have any place to run to that's the way it is for the sake of the weak for the sake of women and children 
you push back there then we will now infest the whole zoo with the pushback then we will now know what exactly is their strength because it is because we retreated we retreated bring your valuables back home bring your valuable back home and we now stretch and wait any slighted move you push back don't wait for a minute because they will expand that is the only language this Fulani is going to hear. The only language. If you don't push back, they will push you off your track. They will conquer you. Now, don't forget four years before they give it up. Have you now seen the reason why Tinubu will not be there? He wouldn't be the one to be there. And if anything happened to him today, they will not report it. They will make sure they swear him in. Now, the poster in Asorok, the group of cabals in Asorok, is now pushing it that they are going to actually um, make Tinubu inherit the case of Mazen Namdekano. Can you imagine the... Can you imagine the rubbish? Oh, Nigeria. And all of you who used your platform to protect Obi, promote Obi, when I told you Obi is the worst thing that I ha I will happen to you, I am not saying it because I hate his ideology. I am I was not saying it because I hate his plan. I was not saying it because I hate him. I love him. He is a Biafran. Directly, he has never, you know, directly he has never done anything to me. But indirectly, he has done something to all Biafrans. But at the end of the day, you need to, we need to make decisions that will favor you in, in you know, we are talking about long-term plan. We are not talking about, you know, temporal plan that's the reason why we told you Obi will not favor you and they will not get him in there they wanted to use agent provocateur to make it seem as if these people who are actually talking reality who are actually exposing the plan to make sure that they will be say we are the reason for not letting Obi in and I called you also I told you do not anybody who will come and tell you there will be no election in Biafra land. That person is a criminal. And that is as a result of what happened. If you find agent provoked to announce that, you know, tweeting against anybody, you should know that their plan failed. Because it is always a failed plan. He didn't deliver. He never delivered anything. So the plans will not hold. It will no longer stand. Because he has to deliver according to the plan. But he couldn't. He couldn't make it. Because and that's why they were they are so so scared about IPOB because IPOB is resolute, formidable. IPOB is something that you don't know their beginning or their end. Because IPOB is God chosen organization to give freedom to his own people. That is IPOB. And that is the reason why we defeat every forces. We push back every energy that they will send against us. We will always emerge victoriously because our cause is ordained. And this cause that we are fighting to achieve it is a cause for freedom and emancipation of Umuchuku Kikabiyama which God knows about and we will not ever stop until we achieve it let's go to Wazurike now you have seen what 
how the North planned it and their mandate or their obligation. You have seen and how they will execute it, I have told you. But you undermine judge money because you don't come here and see 3,000 or 10,000 watching. When I speak it, undermine it. But tomorrow you will start hearing it. You know, bloggers will start using my terminology. That is one thing about it. So, it is very, very important that you know that Northern people said they want more four years. And that four years, they will get it by fire, by force. They created a double-edged sword. Now they want to now transfer Mazen Namdekano to Buhari. That is the reason why, because Wazurike, no matter how compromised and uh, how he has actually messed up, he is still, he was once, he was once, you know, he was the one who actually, he was, he contributed in giving us Mazen Namdekan. You can never take it away from him. He contributed. You know, God used him to announce Mazen Namdekan somehow. By, Mazen Namde, by forming an organization or being a chairperson of an organization that Mazen Namdekan was a member of, which was Masob. And immediately the time for Mazen Namdekan to take the mantle, this man got compromised. Mazen Namdekan picked up the mantle because he is, he was prepared for him to locate Mazen Namdekan, not for him to lead, not for him to actually bring it up, but for him to locate Mazen Namdekan. Just like according to the context of the Bible, John the Baptist paved way for Yeshua, our brother. He paved way for Yeshua, which is the one you name Jesus Christ. The one they have impersonated and bring a white guy with blue eyes. So, he announced him, he paved way for him, and he comes. John the Baptist, did you hear about him anymore? No, you didn't hear about John the Baptist anymore. Now, Wazulike now paved way for Mazen Namdekan. And he did not know when he was doing that. Because he was under the influence of this call. And that was where his call, you know, is. He got compromised. So, if he did not got, get compromised, you will not have two captains sailing on one boat. And now, because the captain, the main man, is in charge, Wazurika, don't be surprised that he still see the algorithm. He still follow the algorithm. Don't be surprised. Let me tell you why. The reason on or uh, the reason for what Uwazurike said here. Who, who let let us me to to the reason why Uwazurike said what he said here. It is none other reason than Uwazurike have seen the time the ticking time bomb. Uwazurike can foresee that it is no longer a, a time for you know all this uh, go and catch them. My mother Nam the Kanu said and Uwazurike uh, said and uh, these people said it is now the time where everyone that is found among them will be dashed. So he starts now to, you know, do what he's supposed to be doing. Backing Mazen Namdekano up. Because that is, is, that, that is supposed to be his own, 
you know, path, backing him up, regardless of what he will see and say he did. While you are backing him up, if he say anything to you, you should know that you must have done something. So you need to retract your step. The fact that you refined him or you found him does not mean that you own his destiny or does not mean that you own him. You found him because God ordained you to find him. God did not ordain you to find him for you to be better than him or for you to be superior more than him. Regardless of whether he's older than he's younger than you. It is about the mantle, the call. That is the reason why Wazurike found him, but he never know the real reason why he found him. And he is supposed to back him up. He is supposed to support him like elder brother and a younger brother who is more formidable by the, uh, like more than the elder brother, who has what he takes more than the elder brother. Pave way for him. Give him your support. It is still, you were supposed to be respected in Biafra land today. Not every day um, being, you know, cursed by people because of, you know, your greed or your envy. And at the end of the day, this is what Wazirike said here is exactly what he's supposed to be doing. Listen to him. Our needs. Please, I'm not making this video for this purpose. Buhari, please, I thank God, beg you, make sure you release the name can before you leave office. Make sure you release the name can before you leave office. You have no reason, you have no reason whatsoever to, to leave him behind while you, you leave office. If you can obey the Supreme Court over the Naira, whatever, you have to obey the court of appeal over the demand and the instruction to release the Nandikan. Nandikan should not wait for Tinubu. Tinubu has no, no business with Nandikan. On the issue of Lagos, what people are going through in Lagos? I just they laugh. I just they laugh. I saw one. MC or Lomo or whatever they call him, showing power. I got a laugh. We have tested this thing before. This guy, like, when will they do? When will they start? When they start? No, I go beg for peace. It's only federal government that can challenge us in Nigeria when it comes to the power. No other, no other tribe. So this thing you are doing in Lagos, humiliating people, pursuing them, wounding them, fighting them, because we have never reacted. When you push us to the wall, now you go beg for peace. This Olowo and the MC Olowo and his clerk or uh, friends who are doing all this. Now from corner where they hide, you will be preaching for peace. Now you go run away. I know who it was at. When we battle back, now you go run away. Now you go cry. That your leg was, your leg will not talk to you. I know how we are pacifying our people. Cool down. Cool down. We are not cowards. We are warriors. These are the two things I said. I should say this afternoon. Nigeria, you are pushing in the to the war. We don't want to fight any war again. But if you control the push us to the war, no problem. Thank you. You want to humiliate us. You want us to fight by all means. Please, I'm not making this. This video for this purpose. Buhari, please. I thank God, beg you, make sure you release the name can before you leave office. Make sure you release the name can before you leave office. You have no reason, 
You have no reason whatsoever to, to leave him behind. Now, I want you to know, make sure you release Nam the Kano because Buhari want to pass it, pass Nam the Kano over to Tinubu so that they will be using him as a leverage between this anonym animosity between Igbo and Yoruba. That is the plan, and we cannot allow that. We cannot allow that Mazen Nam the Kano to be a leverage. Use your platform, use your platform. Call on these lovers of freedom. Let them make sure that they get ready. It's either they go out there, demand for Mazen Nam the Kanu release for peace to reign in Nigeria, or they get ready to fight a war. It is not a threat. That is the, what the algorithm foretells. That is what it foretells, you know. I want you to know what this man is saying here. It is a very, very valid point that he's making. For the first time, you will hear me validate the comments of this man. For the first time. You know why? Because this time around, he said it and he mean it. He is not saying it because of you know something is is he is chasing something or something is chasing after him but he said it because he mean it why does he mean it because he knows if this problem start in biafra land we are not going to tolerate saboteurs we will not tolerate saboteurs saboteurs are the first people to be cut down to be taken away to be ostracized saboteurs that is one thing so that because you cannot you know he cannot he, he could see he could feel that vibe of what is going to happen that is the reason why he is seeking for his own restitution or my i say retribution as well that is the reason why whatever he says here he mean it and he went ahead and sent a message i want you to actually hear that message that he sent let me play the second tape because uh this video was um actually cut piece piece by piece i believe to fit in other social medias so listen to this Uh, Buhari. Buhari is the person that was releasing them. One moment. This is the second part of this video. Once we're done with it, we contextualize it with what Iwanyang said. Now listen to it. And for this office, I don't know what is really happening. We want to elongate Nandikano's stay in detention by begging to the group who have not been sworn in. That is why at times I look at people I love. Many of our problems are caused by our people. Instead of asking to have, make sure you release them the can before you go. We are shifting it to the I want to let some people know. The worst set of people that will want to now the can to be released. The last set of people that will want to now the can to be released are the evil politicians. Moreover, the, go the so-called governors. Not all of them will, but the, those you think are your friends that love you are your
Now, the worst people who want Nam the Kanu to come out are the Igbo politicians. Now you will now contextualize what he said with the the latest media statement made by Devil Omahi. Contextualize it with that media statement. Now tell yourself exactly the truth of what is going on. You will come to a uh, you will come to a conclusion that these people, these people, they know what they are doing. They know what they are doing. Igbo politicians were the ones who wrote to make sure that Mazen Nam de Kano. Let me bring more people into this program. Igbo politicians wrote to make sure that Mazen Nam de Kano does not. Oh, unfortunately, I can't. I can't. I am not using. Oh no, I'm not using. I'm not using the real the right admin so to make sure that mazen nam de kano does not come out because if they know that mazen nam de kano when he comes out nobody listens to them but they listen to mazen nam de kano they know they cannot achieve their selfish gain if mazen nam de kano is out that's why they wrote that letter many of you must have forgotten about the letter now, is it not time for you obedient, including Pitobi, to demand for the release of Mazen Namdekano? He will not do it because he still have hope. As a, maybe there are people who are prophesying to him, have hope. You will make it. Do it. Uh, by the time it will manifest, you have wasted your time and energy waiting for court. By the time you realize it, your time is wasted. The man is not in the power. Everything is gone. And uh, you will be regretting had I know. Judge Money said it. It is time for you to react. Because there is some message that was Rike said here. There are some messages. Message was Rike sent here. Not everybody is able to actually understand that message. But I will explain it to you when he gets to that you know, point. Because he, Buhari cannot use Mazen Namdekano and pass him to another generation of leadership. Another <laughs> leader. While the issue is between Buhari and Mazen Namdekano. He didn't sentence him. He didn't release him because he didn't obey court order. The a epitome of a failed state where the judiciary, you know, they select what decision of judiciary that will be implemented. Failed state. Nigeria is a failed state. And the West who does not actually care because he benefit them more when you are in trouble. So, that's why Wazulike is telling you now, some of you are there, but you cannot do anything. Some of you are there. Instead of using your energy to call for the release of Mazen Namdekan, if it is to go and occupy every government house in his state, make sure that Mazen Namdekanu is released. Make sure you descend the street, occupy the roads, no movement. Let Mazen Nam the Kano be released. It is your right. Because if he is not released peacefully, maybe you want him to be released violently. And I don't know, I don't think anyone is actually want it. Because everyone is peaceful. Because if you want to bring it to that, his release violently, it is what Buhari is trying to hand over to Tinubu. It is what Buhari is trying to pass on to Yoruba nation. And 
for you to avert that, you need to demand for the release of Ahmadike. And wherever you are as a brethren, if they start to stir up their wrath or they are stir up their sword to kill you, kill them back. It is self-defense. If they kill you, kill them back. Because nobody holds the monopoly of violence. They say you are one Nigeria. Kill them back. Self-defense. It is not actually, you know, pushing you to do something that is not proper. We live in developed country. We know how things work. And that is how it is going to be. Listen to Wazrike, you will hear the message. I will, I will post it when I get the message is delivered. Listen. What's the enemies? They are what's the enemies? How can somebody ask an incoming government who has not even taken position to release somebody arrested and detained by another government? Why can't that government release him? What we say does Buhari have? To detain Namdikano. When a court of competent decision has asked for the release, then a Nipo man is coming out to say, Please, uh, uh, Tilimbu, we congratulate you. There is a Namdikano when you are sworn in. What has Tilimbu got to do with Namdikano? Then, when he comes into office, uh, another machinery will be set in place to release Namdikano. When Buhari should that on general to bring out on the camera according to the dictates of the court of appeal. If we had a good respect the decision of the Supreme Court in the Niagara, whatever, we design or swap, why can't we obey the the, 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 the dictates of the court of appeal to release on the camera? Because he followed the rule of law. In the case of Ronald Khan, he, he, he forgets to follow the rule of law. It's injustice. It's injustice. And that's what I'm thinking about. And that's what I've been talking about. But some of the people who say they are clamoring for Biafra don't even understand anything. I don't know. When uh, Buhari, Buhari is the person that was releasing and can void this office. I don't know what is really happening. Okay, now, have you now seen what Wazurike is saying here? It is, he says, that some of you or most of you that are claiming you are fighting for Biafra that you is looking at you you don't know what to do because he is telling you it is time to use this opportunity to descend the street it is time to use this opportunity to demand for your right it is time for you to use this opportunity to do something that will compel these people to release Mazen Namdekano and they organize a referendum. You can protest for referendum. There has been a protest in France. Protest in France. There has been there is a protest in Germany now. I believe. There is a protest in Germany. Was it in Germany? Yes. There was a protest today or yesterday in Germany. There is a protest. There was a protest in, in UK. There was a protest in South Africa. There was a protest in Uganda. Sorry, in Kenya. There was a protest in many places. And it is a massive, massive, massive protest. Make sure that you protest. Make sure that you block the revenue of this place. 
block make sure that there is no movement block close the country down in protest and see if something will not happen and see if something will not change except if you want this to go down to through a violent means i am giving you a, a very important message and advice protest for the release of Ohamadike and they give us a date for referendum. We have come to a con conclusion that Nigeria does not like themselves. That Nigeria does not like themselves. We have come to that terms and we need to make peace with it. We need to actually rethink. We need to come to a, a resolution that will make this Nigeria who does not like themselves to actually rethink, uh, you know, this, their, their one Nigeria. It is time to rethink about, think about it and come to a table and say, it is time for a referendum. We have been promoting this thing. It never worked. But because they have the mind of a conquered people, they will never ever try to, you know, look for a possible peaceful means. But they want to die. They want to be killed. They want to be killed. That is the only language that they want to go through. But if you want to avert this language, it is time for you to the demand for the release of Ohamadike by through a protest, peaceful protest. But this peaceful protest must be massive. That is the only way you can do it. It is the only way you can do it. Because these people with two face, two face people. There is a video where Tony Blinken was being drilled because the news had it or intelligence have it, had it, has it that he is funding the war in Ukraine, both sides. They are funding the war in Ukraine, both sides. But it will be a topic for another day. There was something Nelson Mandela said about nigeria that is something that i am trying to i'm you know looking for to see if it is here then i will remind you i believe i have it let me open it and, ha and show you before we call it a day let me show you The one of Tony Blinken, we will do it some other time. Now, listen to what Nelson Mandela has to say. Had to say, rather. Before, um, let me bring it. Uh, and if there is a country. Now. And if there is a country. Wait, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is who? This is Nelson Mandela, right? Now, let us hear from him. And if there is a country that has committed unspeakable atrocities in the world, mm -hmm. it is the United States of America. They don't care. They don't care for, the human, for human beings. 57 years ago, when Japan was retreating on all fronts, they decided to drop the atom bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Killed a lot of innocent people who are still suffering from the effects of those bombs. Those bombs were not aimed against the Japanese. They were aimed against the Soviet Union to say, look, this is the power that we have. If you dare oppose what we do, this is what is going to happen to you. Because they are so arrogant, they decided to kill innocent people in Japan. 
who are still suffering from that. Who are they now to pretend that they are the policemen of the world? Yeah. They are. This is what Nelson Mandela said about these people. Who are they now to start policing the world? Why do you think that people like that is going to come for your aid or going to tell you the truth? That now brings us to the claim that Tony Blinken was is funding the war truth. both sides. That is funding the war both sides. Now, this type of people, hypocrites, chameleons, they will not do anything for you. Those of you who are waiting for IPOB to continue speaking, 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 America will hear us and they will come and turn around things. Or Britain will hear us and they will turn around things. I want you to, you know, get over it because they will not. It is you that will actually do something for yourself. If you do something for yourself because these people, they are using you to fight for survival and you are dying as a result of them achieving their survival. So it is up to you to fight for your own survival by descending to the street of Nigeria. You know, bring economic sanction through a civil disobedient, through a civil disobedient, through a protest. If you are able to achieve it, Mazen Nam Dekanu will be released. Referendum will be conducted. No one will get hurt. No one will get hurt. But some of you who are so, you know, backward, who does not know anything, who is being ruled by ignorance, they will tell me, come back and, and lead the protest. But when somebody will be shouting, kill them kill them they will be they will be praising that person praising that person and that kill them kill them kill them becomes a problem now in biafra land since you stop hearing kill them kill them how many people has been killed nobody since agent provoke to a stop screaming um oh, uh, violent violent how many of our people died nobody Except the one who was the majors eliminated. Labour Party candidate. So all these things you are seeing. You have now seen that IPOB is whiter than white and whiter than gold. Whiter than, you know, snow. Because immediately when we sent the agent provocateur to investigation, to be under investigation, the killings and all these stupid killings stopped in Biafra land. Because we tell you things the way it is. We tell you things the way it is. So they have to now start it somewhere else against Biafrans. But this time around, systematically destroy their livelihood. If they retaliate, then you start, you kill many of them. But they don't know that we will not retaliate the way they expect. We will retaliate at our own terms. But for now, to avert this thing that is going to come, let us go into civil disobedience. Protest. Serious protest. Whether you are use that momentum, that energy of obedient movement that you have supported. Because you have supported it and you have now seen that Obi is anyway not the, the savior. Obi is not the savior. The savior you have abandoned. Bring the savior out to save you. Save the savior to save yourself. That's the way it is. Do it for your own benefit. Iwanyamu and all his political you know, talks and praising of those who killed five million women of his siblings because he's old enough to know about the war or to, to witness the war, even though he might be very small during that time. So for him to be tell, telling you those rubbish, we will deal with them. 
you will never see anybody being dealt with because it doesn't affect you never affected them they don't have physical business what they have is your money that they're sitting upon or you will which if instead of going to war we close all the oil well in biafra land all the oil exploration we shut it down for the government to come to our terms for the government to do what we we want because power be belong to the people not to the certain individuals because they can and we can as well they are fighting and chasing you out of lagos make use of your the resources in your land close it for for them not to benefit any anything from there again vice versa tooth for that without bloodshed i am taking you to to i am actually navigating you through the routes that you will do without going into a full-blown war we will save lives but those of you who are so political about it when this thing break out you are a saboteur and must be treated like a saboteur no no i will take my bow here there is someone whom i promised to call let me try to call him if he answers good um meanwhile um it will be for a very short um, call because i don't like to promise and fail i have ever st i have overstayed actually my budgeted time i have overstayed my budgeted time uh, because the topic was extended so i am going to call him to bring his opinion because i know he want to bring his opinion so yeah judge money yes mazi thank you man Good morning. Uh, yeah. Will you come in? Um, please use like three minutes to to educate our people. I know you have something to say. Yeah. Okay. I will. All right. Go for it. <coughs> Should I go ahead? Yes. Go for it. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. The just the clip that you played they that is just deceived they always come every time we deceive just that our people don't know how to play this politics that is the problem our people are using emotional something to play this politics and which is not helping our people which there is no hope in those things that they are fighting you will fight for something that you have hope on it there is no hope on it. I was watching Iwanyamu how many days ago. He's trying to make a, I don't know what to like call that one, to exonerate Obasanjo that killed our people, destroyed our people. Obasanjo that banned Oboroko, banned everything from our people. He's calling Obasanjo that Obasanjo is somebody that is so Libra. That is so Libra that he helped many people. I don't know. The three hour, I keep on talking about this three hour. People don't know why I keep on talking about this three hour. The this three hour they implement no victor, no vanquish. They have never even done even one. They have never done even one. His strength from that 20 pounds that they we collected, we collected, they are still destroying that 20 pounds up to today. So it's something of irony for him to come and there's a relate Obasanjo that is a, what Obasanjo did, that when they surrender the flag to Obasanjo, that Obasanjo will be the first person. Obasanjo is the Western stooge that they put there. There is no Igbo man that is the Western stooge. The, the Igbo politicians are stooge to the Fulani. They don't allow them to go to the Western, and which is very bad, which is very bad. But it's just a home. Look at how they read cap are dis disgracing themselves. But it's just that is angry. 
and uh, that cannot even see road in the sun, that our people are disgracing themselves to just sit with Boris Johnson. An early aspired prime minister that would take him to come to our place, to come and talk to our people, which is very bad. Our people should wake up. You are telling you people that he has called meeting, that our people should not mind anything. They should keep on doing their business in Lagos. Iwanya will, since I was born, know who Iwanya is. We know Iwanya with Dari. We have called for urgent meeting, urgent meeting, urgent meeting. Till now, Iwanya urgent meeting for almost how many years till today? We have never seen, we have never seen anything that came out from Iwanya urgent meeting. Our people should do the need for and come back home, come back home because it, it happened to the Israelites. They left and go back home. And since they get the state of Israel, they say never again you will kill any Israelis in any part of this world and go free. We don't get your own house, excavating in anywhere. You have no strength, you have no power. Remember, there is no strength in diversity. Thank you, George Money. I use my three minutes. God bless you. Yeah, thank you, George Money. Are you there? Yes, Mars. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you yeah. very much. Thank yeah, you. okay. All right. Thank you okay. very much. Um, great and wonderful people of Biafra, lovers of freedom. Okay, what? It is now time that we call it a day until we meet again. Do not forget that you know you make your choice, whichever choice you make today, it is the choice that you are going to live in, live with. If you make the wrong one, you live with it. If you make the right one, you live with it. But at the end of the day, I have told you to avoid this, you know, calamity that is about to befall you and Nigeria. Make sure we start it through the civil disobedience process let our people descend the street it is better than full-blown war in nigeria because the world is not willing to act until something happens that's when they will react but for now i am going to leave you here until we meet again stay safe stay informed bye for now Land of the rising sun we love and cherish We love homeland of our brave heroes We must be
Flag of liberty.